middle of it. So I just kind of flipped through. Well, one, I'm having a lazy Sunday morning, which is why I'm an hour late. Um, <laughs> just like my get up and go, got up and went without me, um, which is neither here nor there. So, uh, but I was looking, I was looking at chapter 15. Chapter 15 is 50 pages, 50 pages. So I have a sneaking suspicion that we're going to be in chapter 15 for about a week and a half, barring anything unusual, which prevents me from doing it. <laughs> like being really lazy on a Sunday morning and, get, you know, getting up. Um, but chapter 15 is called Physical Perfection Concluded. And I just want you to see, see all the, that's all of the little, uh, little sections that he has in there. It's very, very long. 50 pages. It starts on 215 and ends on 265. So I was like, hmm, okay. At least I assume that's, yeah, that's 50 pages. Okay. Um, so <laughs> we're going to do, you know, four or five pages today. Uh, but what we are going to start with is what can be healed is the first section. What should we try to heal through spiritual treatment? If we were dealing only with the power of thought, we should not expect to heal anything. But if we are dealing with a universal principle, why should we set any limit to its power? Since the law of God is infinite from the spiritual viewpoint, there is no incurable disease as opposed to a curable one. The law knows nothing about disease. It only acts. The practitioner realizes that their word is the presence, power, and activity of truth, which is in them, which is the Almighty, which is God, beside that, beside which there is none other, which is in quotes. This word is the law unto the thing where unto it is spoken and has within itself the ability to revive and the intelligence to execute itself through the great law of all life. This word being the spontaneous recognition of living spirit, infinite, ever present and active is now made manifest in and through this person or thing about which the practitioner is thinking. The spirit, to spirit, there can be no incurable disease. The word incurable means not susceptible to being cured. The root definition of cured is cared for. If we say that a disease is incurable, we are saying that it is not sensitive to care. As long as any cell is alive, it is sensitive to care which means that as long as a person is alive, the cells of the body respond to care. Naturally, they are not being cured if they are not being properly cared for. We have already learned that disease is largely a state of mind, and we could hardly say that a state of mind is incurable, could we? We know that thought is constantly changing, forever taking on new ways of expression. It cannot possibly maintain, remain permanent. It has to change. Can we not accordingly change it to a better state instead of to a worse? Materia Medica is using the term incurable less and less frequently to, for most disease in the field of medicine. For most disease in the field of medicine is being cured. Let us then free ourselves from the assumption that any disturbed state of thought need be permanent, incurable. Well, that was interesting. <laughs> okay. That's pretty cool. I like that he starts off with the, in, you know, there's nothing that's incurable. All right. Next suggestion, which is suggestions for treatment. In giving mental and spiritual treatments, it is better not to dwell too much on the negative, since we are liable to give it undue importance. To affirm the presence of God is better than to deny the presence of evil. However, if the presence of evil persists in making its appearance, it is sometimes well to deny it. 
to know that it is neither person, place, nor thing, that it does not belong to us, and that it cannot operate through or around us. It is neither cause, medium, or effect. It is neither imagination, idea, nor reflection. It is neither visible nor invisible. It cannot emanate from God and does not emanate from people. The devil is a myth. And heaven is lost merely for the lack of an idea of harmony. Stand still and watch the sure salvation of the Lord. This Lord is always an indwelling presence. The individual I, which is an incarnation of the universal I am. A practitioner should think of their patient as a perfect entity, living in a perfect universe, surrounded by perfect situations and governed by perfect law. The entire universe is devoted to their good. All the spirit hath is thine. Arise, O child, and take. This taking is better accomplished through an affirmative attitude of mind than by dwelling too much on the negative. I might note here that that's he hasn't ex explicitly said it but where your attention goes is where your power goes is what he's saying so don't focus on the negative focus on the positive focus on what you want not what you don't want i just stopped in the middle of a, a paragraph so let's hope that my thumb is where i think it is all right back to the reading behold the kingdom of heaven is at hand but this kingdom must be recognized the recognition is a mental act we must know that the all-powerful spirit is ever available and ever equal to the healing of any discordant condition of the body, mind, or affairs. But we must never look outside of ourselves to find this spirit since it is indwelling. What we really do is look within our own consciousness and pray to the spirit who is in secret and to the spirit who seeth in secret shall reward us openly. It's a Bible quote. Uh, the sincere practitioner will be sure their own thought is clear, that their own faith is equal to the demands made upon it. Above all else, they must be careful not to be caught in the negative stream of consciousness. Jesus would not have raised Lazarus from among those who were believed to be dead if he had been afraid to roll away if he had been afraid to roll away the stone nor if he had listened to the wailing of those about him about him to be spiritually reminded no to be spiritually minded is to enter that tranquil atmosphere of pure thought that heavenly consciousness which is the secret place of the Most High in people. In beginning a series of treatments for any person, we must start with the idea of perfect God, perfect person, and perfect being. In every case, it is well to begin by the removal of doubt and fear, to assure ourselves that the one whom we are seeking to help is complete and perfect harmonious and whole. Next, we must conform our arguments, statements, and realizations so that they may measure up to this high ideal. It is easy to believe that God is perfect. We must also believe that the spiritual person is perfect. And since it is difficult to believe that the objective man, the objective person is perfect, we must confine our statement to a realization of the spiritual perfections of per the person. In such a degree as our realization becomes a subjective embodiment, the objective healing will automatically take place. Hang on. Let me go back a minute here. Okay. It is easy to believe that God is perfect. We must also believe that the spiritual person is perfect. And since it is difficult to believe that the objective person is perfect, <clears throat> we must confine our statements to a realization 
of the spiritual perfection of the person. Okay, okay, got it. <laughs> like, I, the, I, he's talking about the bliss body versus the material body. The, you know, the, 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 the blueprint that God has of us versus the material, the material, uh, form of us. So, um, when we are treating, we are not, we are not treating the material form. We are treating the spiritual form, revealing the spiritual perfection, which will then turn around and affect the material perfection. That's what I think. That's what I think he's saying right now. Um, okay. In such a degree as our realization becomes a subjective embodiment, the objective healing will automatically take place. We know the background of human thought is, to a great extent, one of negation, a denial of harmonious and spiritual universe. Consequently, our outlook on life must be transformed by the renewing of the mind, and even when the results are not immediately forthcoming, we must still maintain a calm serenity of thought. We must relight the torch of our imagination by fire caught from heaven. We must remain faithful to this vision for a realization of the presence of God is the secret power of our work. The following examples are not to be considered dogmatic. They are merely suggested ways by which one may do effective work. The practitioner must realize that all power is given unto them. They must believe that a person is spiritual and they must be certain that their statements about the spiritual person will find a corresponding outlet in the physical person. But to think of a person's entire being as spiritual, and if a person's entire being is spiritual, then their physical being must reflect spiritual ideas. The practitioner supplies these spiritual ideas and lets the law of mind do the rest. To begin the treatment by a silent assurance that people... Being spiritual are exempt from negation is a correct starting point. Infinite love harmonizes pe a, a person's entire being. The healing currents of life flow through them, taking away every negative thought and manifesta manifestation and adjusting their whole physical being to the idea of divine harmony. Okay, I think I'm going to stop there because there was a lot just in those two sections. The next section, so what we're going to do is we're going to start tomorrow on 219 with do not try to go beyond your understanding. So that, which is part of the reason why I'm going to stop so that we can do that and depend upon principle um, together. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because I'm like, oh, there's, yeah. You've heard it. There's a lot in there already. Um, and I kind of flipped through it. And so it looks like he's going to give you like specific examples. It's like, all right, well, like if you're working on this, because one of the titles I saw in there was obesity. And I was like, all right, so this is going to be an interesting week and a half, however long it takes to get through that. Um, but I need to go and inhale my bowl of uh, breakfast. So I'm going to do quick housekeeping. I'm going to remind you that we are Creative Life Spiritual Center, Creative Life Spark. I'm the running Rev Ryan on the social medias that I am on. And one of the easiest ways that you can support us is by going to our social medias, all of the social medias, and uh, like, subscribe, follow, share, comment, engage with us. You know, it bumps us in the algorithms and we think we have good stuff to share. So if you could help us out, that that would be great. All right. Um, there was something else I was going to say. What was I going to say? I don't know. Oh, I was going to remind you uh, that the two ways to, to, to uh, get in touch with us. If you if you want to learn more about the center, our website is creativelife.org and our constant contact email, which you get one a week, is uh, info at creativelife.org. 
That will get you on the constant contact. You get one email a week and the hot links are hot. If it says click here now, it means it. So, um, leaping forward, that puts us in, oh, I get to encourage you to have a great day, wondrous day, a fantastic day, a magical day, an enchanted day, a wonderful day, an awesome day, an amazing day, a Sunday, uh, enjoy the sunshine day, a get some stuff done day, a take a rest day, a go out to lunch with your friends day, a call a friend day, a cuddle with your fur babies day, a hug a friend day, a see what's going on at your spiritual center day, a... um. I have no idea day and that's okay. A good day. And if that is too much pressure, simply have a day. You are enough just as you are. You are a beloved expression of the divine. You are spirit in motion. You are God in action. Or as Reverend Jesse likes to call us, you are a godling. All right. Explore the truth of your being. It's what we've been talking about. Reading the science mind, getting to know who we are, you know, getting to know who the divine knows us to be, which is good. Okay. That is what the divine knows should be. The divine knows should be good. And from there, all things are possible. All right, beloveds, take care of yourself. Know that you are loved. Know that Reverend David will be on around 5 p.m. with you. And I will be back with you around 9 a.m. tomorrow. Take care of yourself. Oh, <laughs> take care of yourself. Know that you're loved. And I will see you next time.